So this morning we wake up in Southport, where we'll stay and sleep in Harry on my mum's drive for the next four nights. And it's basically like a site, but free. Unless my mum, of course, decides to drop us a bill as we drive off. As you'll have seen in the last video, we travelled from Chirk Castle, up through the tunnel under the Mersey to my mum's for the holiday weekend. In this video, Stu photographs a red squirrel, he gets lost in the dunes, I rediscover an old haunt from my youth, and Stu considers a summer job, and we discover a friend up to his knees in it. So whilst Jane sorts some stuff out with her mom, I go to explore a nearby nature reserve in Ainsdale, south of Southport. Good morning, just out for a early morning uh, stroll in Southport, just from Jane's mom's. She's quite close to some woodland area and the coast itself. So I'm going to try and make my way now, I've never been here before, so I'm going to make my way down hopefully towards the coast, maybe see the sea. I've plotted out a route of about 7k that takes me through the reserve along the sand dunes. What could go wrong? Soon after starting out I immediately realise how unprepared I am as I see a relatively rare red squirrel and realise the lack of a tripod causes me to struggle to get focused. But I am soon blessed with a second squirrel and I somehow managed to steady myself to get half a shot at this beautiful but timid creature. The walk starts well and I'm very much on my own with very few people about today. And I soak in the natural beauty of the area. I follow my planned route. Unfortunately things start to go wrong and my phone which is very low on power and I've also forgotten my extra battery pack. The marker posts disappear a lot of the time and I have to use my intuition which lets me down several times. As such my planned route now starts to look like this and I go forwards and backwards and trying to find my way. finally get back on track and I reckon I covered around 10 to 11 kilometers in the end instead of the seven and I must admit I'm absolutely shattered. So I take a few hours off in Harry and chill out and do some video editing whilst Jane sorts out the garden and a bit later on I do some of the odd jobs including fixing a new letterbox. The following day I take Stu on a tour of the local area and we head towards Ainsdale Beach. See the columns on those houses over there when we when they were first built we used to think they were so posh. <laughs> it was the thing then. Yeah, they're not the thing now they were made. 18 degrees today supposed to be. So we're walking down towards the uh, coast area and we'll go onto the beach. It's not a great beach, have you seen it? No, I've not been to it. Jane, Jane's obviously used to live here as a child so knows it better than I do. She's obviously setting the expectations low. That's because uh, there's a, a famous holiday camp here. <laughs> She'll tell you when she gets there. Some beautiful houses though. Big houses, wide streets. They're out for a oh, yeah. bike ride with the kids in the back. Where's the dog? I'll take it back. We thought it was the kids, it was the dogs in the back. <laughs> And as we get closer to the beach, I start to reminisce of a youth spent around this area. So they've obviously tried to jazz this up. Because um, when I was younger, it used to have metal weight railings yeah. and then barbed wire on top. 
and my dad used to always joke it was to keep the holiday makers in and not to keep us out <laughs> i can't believe he's still going to be honest yeah it opened in 1970 it opened and actually i looked at tripadvisor before we came out and uh excellent reviews it had sort of 500 and something and um what's the bottom one terrible oh, yeah, after know. like five categories down was terrible and it had 2600 oh <laughs> so it's it's uh, it's always had a bit of a bad name my mum used to take a car full of kids in and she'd hide half of us under beach towels so we're on google earth and i was surprised to the layout of it and how big it is and despite what I say about pontins on camera, I have some really happy childhood memories of the place. Oh, the kids are enjoying it. Plenty of squealing. Right, this building here is called Toad Hall. That used to be, I spent many a night in that. That used to be a nightclub. Oh my God. When I was growing up. Jane's, cor Jane's corrupt years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I spent in that place. One of them anyway. The night at this nightclub was on a Monday night and you'd quite often see the football stars from Liverpool and Everton. Sefton Council commissioned talented street artist Paul Curtis to create his largest ever mural in 2021 and it's thought to be the largest painting by a single artist in the UK and it took him 360 hours. And needless to say it's divided opinion within the area. And now we head to Ainsdale Beach. It's quite busy and the sun's out. So you've got camper vans on the beach but I don't think you can stay the night. But you can park on the beach for the day. Oh, the dog's jumped out the window. <laughs> oh, he's off for his day out. He jumped out the camper van window. He's too excited being at the beach. That my dad used to bring my brother here to drive the car. Oh, practice in the car. Yeah, yeah, which, I mean, God, he wouldn't do that these days, would he? So I have resisted the urge for an ice cream, but Stu's shut up. Happy? Yeah, it's part of the health regime. Which which bit is this? This is the. I've just I walked fourteen thousand steps yesterday. And I only had a single flag, not a double. Well, there you go. So I paired back. Happy days. We stay for a while and we simply watch the world go by. And unlike Pontins, I don't have great memories of this beach as a child but I'm surprised today that actually it looks a lot better than it did in my head. That's true. Uh coastal walk back or back of the dunes they got these marker posts for the trails so it's a bit easy to follow although I did get a bit lost yesterday on a 10k uh, hike and there's the back of Pontins every block's got a number or a letter so if you've got young kids yeah well it's people go it uh, serves a market at the end of the day people want you know a cheap holiday yeah. weekend stag weekends had 10 weekends I think I come across the barbed wire fence and I can't help but think of my dad and his joke. And we decide to take my mum for a drive to Crosby Beach. We're going to see the sculpture by Sir Anthony Gormley famous for the Angel of the North, and in all the years I've been passing, I've never been to see them. I say them as this sculpture consists of 100 cast iron figures facing out towards the sea. We weren't sure what these people were doing, but they were probably picking up cockles. The figures are all based on the artist's naked body. Each figure is six foot two, 
but are buried into the sand at different levels. The statues were originally exhibited on a beach in Germany in 1997, and it was followed by beaches in Norway and Belgium, and they came to Crosby in 2005, and the statues were set to be relocated in 2007. But despite raised safety concerns from the water sport users, the Coast Guard and the conservationists, art lovers and local businesses lobbied for the statues to stay, and even Gormley himself supported the proposal. And in 2007, despite the council's objection as well, the sculpture known as Another Place was granted permission to remain permanently. When we visited, not all the statues were there as they were being maintained out of the water. The skies were really dark and moody when we arrived, but we thought it just added to the dramatic loneliness of the figures. So we really hope you've enjoyed our videos and if so please help us out by subscribing, giving us a like and above all commenting as this really helps to grow and improve our channel.